I guess I would start, Your Honor, by saying that um, in order for evidence to come in, it has to be elicited by a party. It has to be offered by a party. Um, you're being told that the Commonwealth does not intend to elicit this evidence and that the defense does not intend to elicit this evidence. So I guess the question that I would direct to the court is, do you intend to follow up with questions? I'm not questioning the jury. It's clear that it may be a response, a natural response by a witness. Sure. Uh, so, so, Mr. Yannetti, yes. so it's clearly you try your case the way you want to try your case, and the Commonwealth decides how they want to do it. But I am not tying the hands of witnesses to natural responses to questions. So I'm taking this under advisement. If you open the door, it comes in. Well, I completely understand that, Your Honor. Um, I, I will say that I think probably, I don't want to speak for Mr. Lally, but I think- so, so don't speak for Mr. Lally. I'll, I'll hear speak for, for him I'll in a minute. I'll speak for myself then, if the court will allow me. So that's all of the defendant's motions and limited, correct, Mr. Unetti? I mean, just a moment. <laughs> Mr. Jackson, it's all of them, isn't it? We, we, no, we, no, we, we filed a motion for attorney-conducted panel of voir dire. We're going to talk about impanelment this afternoon. Just being complete in answer to the court's question. That was okay. one that was not addressed, but that's fine. All right. Oh, the, the request just to have panel. Your motion was a little bit confusing. Right. So you just, you want panel voir dire? Panel voir dire, correct. I, I'm not going to do panel voir dire in this case. That there's a federal investigation. That's isn't not, isn't that what this does, if no, you mention it? No, what, explain, what this does. Explain to me why that's not so. The, that's what I'm doing. As the, as not, the court, not yet you haven't, so please explain that. As the court knows, it's essential that the jury is given the context in which every single statement, whatever the statement might be, is brought to light. Does that mean, do we say there's an objection to 25, Ms. Little? Just yes, yes or no. Mr. All right, so, so I'm gonna hear from Mr. Lally on the motion. I just wanted to know if there was an objection. And given that I have no information at all, I, I don't know who, the third party culprit is, even after reading 4,500 pages. I don't know if it will prejudice or, or confuse the jury. How am I supposed to, so you're prepared to argue all this? I'm prepared to argue it, Judge. All right, so we will get to that when we get to the Commonwealth's motion. We are still actually receiving information with regards to the internal affairs investigation as recently as yesterday. Um, so I'm happy to like kind of defer ruling to the court and then address this as it comes up. I think the court will be in a much better position to rule on this issue once the witness testifies. All right. So it would be helpful to me once you know what it is you think you're going to try and introduce um, to tell me how that complies with the holdings in both McFarlane and Graham. There are independent reasons why that is admissible outside of McFarland and Green. Okay, so I need to know all of that. Sure. Okay. Thank you. You know, five minutes before Jennifer McCabe is Googling how long to die in the cold, about eight minutes before Brian Laughlin, the plow driver, first drives by the house and sees nobody at all. And the next morning, Brian Higgins, the first thing, first person he spoke to was Brian Albert. After okay, he I'm going to stop you for a minute. I think we need a break, Madam Court Reporter. Do you need a break? Can you go? How much longer do you think you have with this, Mr. Yannetti? How many more pages or how long you think? Yeah, I've got about, uh, in terms of my recitation of the facts, uh, I've done about a page and a half and I've got three left. Madam Court Reporter, would you like to take a little break? It's hot in here and you've been going nonstop. Okay, let's take a 10 minute break. For us, we can do that. I have a full argument prepared. All right, so who is the third party culprit? We, we are under no obligation to name any specific third party culprit. The motion regarding the DNA, regarding um, excluding the DNA. Mr. Lally, why should I not allow that motion? Uh, for a couple of reasons, Your Honor. Um, number one, uh, what I can uh, provide to the court by way of update is um, that most of the testing uh, with regard to that item is complete. Dealing with the retrograde extrapolation. Okay, we don't have it as 17 anywhere. I thought that was the, the list that the, the helpful list that the Commonwealth. Oh, okay. So, it's, so the, I, right. uh, our number is 289. Right. Okay. We allow it. How long will the demonstration take? So, 
Um, it's the blood draw and the extraction. Yeah, so the motion had both. So that's why, all right, so I guess we don't need to hear. So the, the part of your motion that concerns the statements made by the defendant, the defense is not objecting to. And that's allowed in every single courtroom <clears throat> across so the So impeachment's certainly allowed, but do you intend to put on witnesses regarding challenging character evidence? No, yeah. we're not intending to. That, that's exactly what I was going to summarize by saying the, the bad character focuses on general character traits, uh, whereas impeachment deals with people who right. lied or were untruthful. We Mr. intend Lally, to do the latter. Hold on, Mr. Lally, you're not objecting to impeachment, prior inconsistent statements, things like that. No, of course so not. So you... Uh, if that's what their concern is. Anything you wanted to add to this? It looks a little broader than that to me. It, it is a little bit broader than that. Uh, I think this may be something that we wait until... The so let's get the list of the experts. Take a look at the Commonwealth. It's essential for the how, jury. How are you going to do that? How do you propose? You, is somebody from the U.S. Attorney's Office on your witness list to come in and talk about it? They're in a wedding together, in the wedding party. There's a third photograph. And when was that? When was that? When was that? 2012. Good morning. Andrew Kettlewell for Elizabeth Proctor. Good morning, Mr. Kettlewell. My brother laid out his case. That is laid out quite clearly in his affidavit as well. As to my brother's arguments, uh, eloquent as they may be, they missed the mark. When John O'Keefe was found, he had this set of wounds on his right arm. We need a short compliance date for the production of these notes and reports so that we can at least attempt to prevent further fabrication of evidence. I'm asking the court to set a compliance date to make sure that we actually get the information that we've requested. Okay, thank you. Mr. Lally? Your Honor, I'm not quite done. Oh, you said there were five. I, I was gonna have a conclusion. If I okay. Okay. finish addressing the court. Thank sure. You. Your but I, I still don't have it now. I have it in my hand, Your Honor. So that doesn't help, does it, Mr. Yannetti? I need to read it. No, I'm happy to pass it up. Uh, this, so is, just give it to me and let me read it. I just need to clarify. These are extended. Uh, this, these so are, just give it to me and let me read it. I just need to clarify. These are extended since the last bail hearing. All right. So give me a minute before I hear you on Yes. This. Has the Commonwealth seen this? I, I'm filing it at ex parte. So no, I have not. All right, so Mr. Lally, I mean, Mr. Um, Yannetti, you've seen, I imagine, in your time as a prosecutor, too, you've seen affidavits of indigency? Yes. But this doesn't give me enough information. Well, it doesn't uh, give me enough information under Brangan. It doesn't give me enough information at all. And as you know, that's an awfully high bar. So go ahead. Your Honor, I, I will try to edit. Um, my comments to stay within t the 10 minute mark. It's very difficult to do that. I did not know that we were going to be under such incredible time constraints. As a matter of fact, I thought that the court said the last time we were in court, we had basically your, your words. Yeah, we all day. But that was when we had all the motions, but it's just these two motions. Right, today. But, they're, but they're big. They're uh, big. Consist, uh, uh, so consistent with why don't you go ahead and start? If you need additional time, tell me. But it would be important to focus your argument. Again, I'm mindful of what the U.S. attorney said to me in that letter. And, and I am as well. And my that mindfulness suggests that my comments will be directed to that which is necessary to further the proceedings. Okay. Which cool. means that right ahead. I'll dismissal. Um, in this particular case, there were myriad examples, which I will, again, I'll edit. I was going to go through several, but I'll just touch on them very yeah, quickly. Your memo, I have to say, your memo is very thorough and very helpful to me because you outline everything and same in your supplement. Thank you. To the extent that the court entertains our motion for sanctions, specifically dismissal as a result of his agreement. So can, can I just interrupt there and ask you, are these going to be the same motion, essentially? No. Uh, there's uh, information and evidence that's been provided by the federal authorities, which deals with the egregious conduct of both the district attorney and his investigators and the police. That will be the subject of a uh, separate motion. Your so I thought that was going to be your supplemental memo to this motion. It sounds like it's the same issue. Mr. No, it's, it's not. And I'm uh, what I'm uh, saying to the court is I want I have limited time. I, want, I, I when I interrupt you, I, I stop the time. Well, I, so. I appreciate that. Fuck off, Beverly. Okay, 
Go ahead, Mr. Jackson. Thank you, Your Honor.